Chris Walker, Emergency Preparedness Coordinator for the Hamilton County Health Department joins me again this morning. Hello. Good morning, ma'am. Bring us up to speed on our numbers. Are we staying low? Our numbers are staying low. It's a good thing. Um, they're, they're back down well before the holidays. Um, so hopefully we can keep it down there. Uh, you know, testing has dropped off some, but I don't think it's dropped off uh, to a, a rate that would be alarming to say that we're not providing enough. So there's enough capacity out there. There's enough capacity for people to go get free tests out there. Um, we basically have operations 12 hours a day, seven days a week where people can go get tested if they need to. So I think we're in really good shape. I think we're heading in the right direction here. Great. Our vaccination clinic out at the 4-H fairgrounds is making a switch to Pfizer tomorrow. We had been giving out Moderna. Why the switch? The switch is, uh, is twofold. Number one, it allows us to get our hands on more vaccine. We're essentially going to be able to triple the number of vaccines we give on a given week. Uh, the other side of that is that it allows more flexibility for Indiana Department of Health to utilize their mobile clinics to get into uh, more areas around the state. And with the Moderna vaccine, it's a little easier for them to transport around so that they can get into those areas that are a little harder to reach. So we're really excited to uh, be able to get more vaccine into our residents as well as help the state get out into areas that might be underserved right now. And that's because the Moderna doesn't need to be kept at such a cold temperature, correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, Pfizer is working on getting their emergency use authorization adjusted so that it does not need to be stored at an ultra cold level, which is negative 70 centigrade. Um, and they're looking at being able to store it at something more along the lines of negative 20 centigrade, which is more along the lines with a more normalized vaccine like penicillin or something like that. What about those who got their first dose of Moderna with us? Can they still get that second dose at the 4-H fairgrounds? Yes, they will. They, we, Everyone we give a first dose to, we have an appointment available for them to get their second dose. We do anticipate that we will be done with first, or I'm sorry, with Moderna completely by the end of March. So there are some people that are scheduled after uh, March 30th. We'll be pulling them forward, uh, but they'll still be after their 28 days of eligibility and before that 42 days. Other big news over the weekend, Johnson & Johnson was okayed by the CDC. Any idea when we might start seeing that show up here in Indiana? Uh, I don't know when it's going to start showing up, but I do know that State Department of Health is already starting to pull places to see if they're ready to receive more vaccine. And, you know, it, it is another great option out there to help uh, help us get going here and as we continue to try and vaccinate the majority of the population. Yeah, we know it's a single dose vaccine. What else do we know about the Johnson & Johnson vaccine? Right, so it is a single dose. Um, we know that it's 66% effective overall at preventing COVID, which is uh, about a third lower than, or a little less than a third lower than Pfizer and Moderna. However, it's 85% effective at preventing severe symptoms of COVID. So while not as effective, it's still a very effective option, uh, especially as we look at moving down in the age groups and those that are less likely to have severe outcomes anyways. C compare that, if you will, to the effectiveness of just the average flu vaccine. So typically a flu vaccine is somewhere between 30 and 50% effective. It kind of depends on what we see from uh, China and Australia, those that have a flu season before us. Um, but still, you know, 66% effective is a lot better than 0% effective, which is where a lot of Hoosiers are right now. So if we can even get them up to that level, we're doing really well. We're also rolling out a new program this week called Homebound Hoosiers. We're doing that on a state level. Talk about that. Tell us what that's all about. Sure. We're partnering up with uh, our local EMS organizations. Folks that are homebound can register through the, uh, the county's uh, Center for Aging to get registered as a homebound Hoosier. And what happens is, is during the day, we contact our EMS partners with a certain amount of vaccine and they can go out to that registered resident's home and administer their vaccine for them. We then make sure we schedule their second dose and we'll plan on having 
EMS back out there a second time for that as well. Has there been a big call for that or a big need for that in our county? Right now, we've got about 40 people registered. Um, I don't I don't know how many residents total we have in the county that are eligible because you still have to meet the vaccination criteria requirements in addition to being homebound as well. So um, I'm guessing that number's fairly low, but you know, if there is someone out there that meets that criteria and is not registered and needs to be re registered, I'd re highly recommend they reach out to uh, the Center for Aging here in the county, which I believe is the Shepherd Center. Awesome. Anything else you want to add I didn't ask as we look at the week ahead? Uh, uh, you know, warmer weather's coming. I think we'll see people starting to be more active. I think, you know, it's a good time to remind everybody to keep our social interactions outside whenever possible, limit our contacts outside of our social circle. You know, we're we're not near, we're nearing herd immunity, but we still have a long way to go. And, uh, you know, we still need to continue to do what we do to protect ourselves and protect our families. Chris Walker, Hamilton County Health Department. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am.